What's up, you too? Long time no see. Um, YouTube said they're going to take away a partner program ship thing because they haven't uploaded the video in a year. So, thought maybe I should keep that and upload a quick video. That's why there's a video right now. And FYI, if you don't upload a video in a few years, they take that away. So, keep that in mind. Not that it matters, you can't monetize cannabis content anyways, and they're just flag all our videos anyways, but maybe it's good to keep around. I don't fucking know. Let's just talk about this irrigation setup at our old spot. Um, basic, functioning, not super expensive, works great. For just if people like to see it, it'll be completely different at the next spot, but you can at least see how it was set up here uh, for those last runs we've been doing. We used a Trollmaster Aqua X controller. Um, I don't utilize like the pH sensor or anything. I do have the EC sensor plugged in, but I, I keep this in our runoff then. So we have all the tanks drain off into this bucket and this, you know, sumps, sumps it out. But uh, the EC sensor is in here. We just cleaned all the tables and yeah, we got our clones and a pro mix thing. That's why there's all that perlite in there. But anyways, the EC sensor sits in there because I really just want to track runoff. I really don't. I, can see, I know what's in my tank when I'm mixing stuff. So. Um, but I think that's really cool because you can data log all that and then I can log into the control master and I can see my runoff like up and down. You know, it's for all tables, so it's not like specific, but it is nice to have. Um, so yeah, so that's it. And then, then so that troll master controller hooks up to this little 24 volt relay box deal and this is just all the signal wire for each solenoid. Um, so very basic setup. You get the troll master controller. You run your little line to your little 24 volt switch here. Each one of these zones you can hook up to a solenoid, right? And there's just a magnet in here. And when the gets power, it opens it up, and the valve opens. And when it loses power, it closes. Each solenoid also usually has like some type of manual switch that'll push that valve open. Just a little plastic lever in there. Blow it. Um, but yeah, so that's how that works. So when the control master controller tells, hey, open zone one or whatever, this clicks on, that solenoid opens, and water starts flowing. So the pumps are always plugged in, the lines are always pressurized, right? And then that's how it waters. So for us, we have a, each zone is a table. So each table has its own solenoid. So, you know, we got five tables in there. The sixth zone used for um, is circulating the tank water. So we have two tanks so each one actually goes in if you can see there's actually two signal wires running into the same zone the, sorry the same zone this is, you can totally do it's not a problem so what will happen five minutes before tables are supposed to water on their watering schedule this will kick on and the tanks will basically circulate and mix for five minutes prior to watering just to get like you know get it, get it all mixed up and good no sediment sitting around whatever um, and then each zone you know will water and in a consecutive order, we just do one table per pump at a time. These are three quarter horsepower. We could maybe do two tables, probably without a big issue, but haven't you know? I haven't done the math to confirm that, so I don't know. Uh, and anyways, man, where was I? Okay, so water turns on. We have our troll master controlling the water connected to the solenoids. These are both going outside so whenever we need to mix and clean takes we can close this we can open this and this will dump our water outside right we have these filters these are the ones miami mango is just using and they've always been pretty solid they're easy to clean clean them once a week um they usually don't have that much sediment in them so probably not even necessary to clean it that much but we do tank cleans and couple cleans once a week um anyway so when we're watering and the cylinder opens in the room water comes through the filter this stays closed because that was just for recirculating comes through here hits a 40 psi pressure reducer so with our drippers we're using the netafin half gallon half gallon an hour emitters um they don't need more than 40 psi so this just reduces the PSI to make sure that it's not overdoing it or we're like blowing a line in the room or whatever. Um, and then this just goes into the room. And then in the room you have a solenoid each table. Puts on, puts off. I just added this. So we have this line up here. This is our RO water. So when we're filling these tanks, we just open this valve and our RO water sits in that big tank back there. Um, and so that way we can fill tanks with RO water. It also has over there, 
And over there on each side of the room, a quick disconnect for a hose. So when we're like cleaning or whatever, just hook the hose up, do that. But I needed to actually feed using the hose when we're doing transplants in the 6x6s. Six I um, normally already have that done, but I didn't. So they were in the room. I needed a way to be able to hand water. So I basically just plumb this random thing into what goes into that RO water line. So I can basically cut off the RO water there, open this up, close that, and then I can get my tank, my feed water up into where the hose connect is. And I can do some hand water if I have to in a pinch. Uh, but normally, once the drippers are in, we don't we don't do any hand watering. So that's essentially it. Um, our RO tank isn't very special. We have talked about this on our Instagram. And by the way, if you have any questions, just hit up hit us up on Instagram. Who's in her grow? Um, this is just uh, goes outside. Has little heat, heat traps probably unnecessary because this doesn't fill up with water enough to ever like have water probably stain in there. Probably evaporates. But you just put like a screen filter or something for bugs outside if you're worried about it. But this is just in case the float valves fail or for whatever reason we overfill our RO tank, it will overflow outside and not in the building. Uh, we just use the, man, I forgot what this is called, RO 600, it's the same RO filter we've used for a long time. Uh, this is a heater bot, it's just like an aquarium heater, but it has a sensor on it, which is nice, it just sets the temperature so it just keeps, our water comes out pretty cold, so it just keeps this water somewhat close to tank temperature. It's filling up right now, it's blood flow, but it takes like a you know a day or so. Well, I mean, if it was full of 45 degree, 50 degree water, it takes like a couple days. But once it warms up and like you're just filling up tanks and topping it off, and the water's already a little bit warm, it does, you know, it keeps it pretty steady. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, in a pinch, though, we do have this guy, which is just like brewers use it to heat up little five gallon buckets of water. It's just like a 15 watt uh, heater, water heater. But you can just completely submerge it so we can just turn the pump on plug that in and it'll help heat up the water if we if we have a problem with it being too cold when we get it out of the, the ro tank um and then yeah over on the bottom is just another pump we just plug that in goes up goes, has a reducer on it and goes into each each tank like we just showed you that's pretty much it man um love the troll master makes it super easy like that and also using power si with it Bloom and the regular. I only sprayed Bloom last time, and I think we did it four times, and I saw a pretty significant difference in how the flower developed, so I was pretty impressed with that. I think now we might try to feed this product and spray the regular formula, is what he suggested. Um, and this is some test stuff for Perfect Grow over here, but might try that, uh, but I really was super impressed with what we saw just by doing four foliars of that in flower. And we did it every three days after like day 11. It's because we got this sample late. We didn't get it till like day 11 or something flower. So we sprayed it the first day we got it and then every three days, which was about four times before we had to, you know, we don't like spraying too far into, into flower. So, but yeah, that's the, that's the fucking water tank room setup. YouTube don't take our partner program away. Please and thank you. Uh, comments will be turned off, so his and her grow on Instagram if you want to ask any questions. Y'all have a good one.